Are cavities, bad breath, or overall poor oral health giving you trouble? Perhaps your toothpaste isn't helping as much as you had hoped. Well, you're in luck, because in today's video, we're diving deep into all things oral health. This video is packed with do's and don'ts, along with an easy step-by-step -step protocol curated for you. Rest assured, you won't have any concerns about oral health after this. Before we begin, it's important to note that the information we're about to share is rooted in extensive research and expert advice. This video is inspired by the insights of professionals like Dr. Huberman and Dr. Ellie, whose work has greatly informed our understanding of oral health. You'll find links to their YouTube channel in the description below. Cavities, those holes in our teeth, are mainly caused by a germ called Streptococcus mutans. This germ spreads easily, often from sharing things like toothbrushes. Once it's in your mouth, it feasts on sugar and releases acid. That acid is what leads to cavities forming, not just the sugar itself. So, it's not only about watching your sugar intake, it's also about stopping that acid from damaging your teeth. Knowing this helps us understand why simply cutting back on sugar might not be enough to prevent cavities. To begin with, the structure of your tooth consists of enamel, the outermost layer, and dentin, the layer beneath it. Enamel is the hardest substance in the human body, however, it's not impervious to damage. When bacteria and acids accumulate on the tooth's surface, they start to attack the enamel, gradually eroding it. Initially, this erosion manifests as small white spots or areas of discoloration on the tooth's surface. Demineralization, where minerals like calcium and phosphate are lost from the enamel due to acids produced by bacteria, exacerbates this process. If left unchecked, these acids can penetrate deeper into the enamel, reaching the dentin layer beneath. Dentin is softer and more porous than enamel, making it more susceptible to decay. Once bacteria breach the enamel and reach the dentin, the process of demineralization accelerates. But here's the good news. There's another state called remineralization. And ideally, your teeth should be in this state 99% of the time. Remineralization is the process of replenishing minerals into the holes left by bacteria, potentially filling them in. When your teeth are in this state, there's a good chance it can restore the structure of your tooth, especially if the cavity is limited to the enamel. And the interesting thing about cavities is that when you have multiple ones, they usually maintain similar depths. For instance, if a cavity on one tooth is three quarters into the enamel, it's likely that the same depth will be true for another tooth. So, the key takeaway is to prioritize remineralization. The following tools will ensure you maintain that state at all times. The first tip is intermittent fasting, but it's important to clarify that we're not talking about extreme fasting where you go for long hours without eating. Instead, it's about having an extended period during the day when you're not eating or drinking anything except water. For example, you might have breakfast around 8 a.m. and lunch around 1 or 2 p.m., giving yourself at least a 5-hour window without food, snacks, or drinks other than water. When you're not constantly eating or snacking, your mouth has a chance to produce saliva, which is crucial for the remineralization of your teeth. Saliva helps neutralize acids and replenish essential minerals in your enamel, which strengthen your teeth and prevent cavities. The next tip to add to your toolkit is proper brushing. The practice of hard brushing or brushing forcefully doesn't offer any benefits and can actually harm your teeth and gums. Hard brushing, especially with stiff bristles, can damage the interface between your teeth and gums. To properly brush your teeth, use a soft toothbrush and gentle strokes, ensuring you cover all surfaces of your teeth. The correct technique involves holding the toothbrush at a 45 degree angle to the gums and brushing in an upwards motion. Avoid brushing sideways, as this can be abrasive to the enamel and gums. If you prefer using an electric toothbrush, be cautious not to apply too much pressure, as this can also cause damage. For those with tooth sensitivity, Brushing your gums lightly can be helpful. This gentle stimulation can increase blood circulation and deliver nutrients to the deeper parts of your teeth, promoting overall oral health. Proper flossing is another essential tool for maintaining oral health. If your gums bleed when you floss, this doesn't mean you should stop. It's actually a sign that you need to floss more regularly. Flossing effectively shields you from bad breath-causing bacteria, prevents tartar formation, and aids in plaque removal. Now that we understand the significance of flossing, Let's address the question of how to floss correctly. Contrary to common practice, simply pulling the floss down between your teeth is wrong. Instead, carefully glide the floss down each side of each tooth, 
ensuring to also get beneath your gums. While under the gums, use a gentle circular motion to remove any trapped particles, then lift the floss upwards. Repeat this process twice daily for optimal results. The final tool for maintaining optimum oral health is xylitol. Derived from plants, xylitol is a sugar with fewer calories and minimal impact on blood sugar levels. It happens to be Streptococcus mutans' favorite food. However, when Streptococcus mutans consume xylitol, they lose their ability to produce the acid that demineralizes your teeth. Additionally, xylitol has ability to kill and inhibit the growth of Streptococcus mutans. This makes xylitol an exceptional solution for shielding you from cavities, bad breath, and ensuring overall health. And the subject of xylitol leads us to the next section, which is the first step in this mouth care system designed for you. This system comprises a total of five steps, each with a specific solution, duration, and frequency of usage. Think of it like following a recipe or a step-by-step -step guide. Simply follow the process, and you'll see results. The initial step involves incorporating a tooth protective element after every meal, with the best option being xylitol. You can choose either the mint or the chewing gum, depending on your preference. Personally, I prefer using the gum, and I recommend you do too. Here's how it works. Aim to take two xylitol gums five times a day. For optimal results, follow this schedule. Have the first gum after breakfast, the second one mid-morning, the third after lunch, the fourth in the afternoon, and the fifth after dinner completing your daily routine. One of the great things about xylitol is its immediate effectiveness upon entering your mouth. It acts like a magnet for streptococcus mutants, helping you protect your teeth throughout the day. The next step in our oral care routine involves using a mouthwash before brushing, and I highly recommend Clossus as the best option available. This specific mouthwash works by targeting your saliva, making it less acidic. You see, after consuming anything, especially carbohydrates or acidic fruits like citrus, your mouth tends to become acidic. However, Clossus is uniquely formulated to excel in acidic environments. The third step is, of course, brushing your teeth. We have spoken in great depth about proper toothbrushing, so there's no point in spending much time on the topic again. But one key thing we have not mentioned is the kind of toothpaste you need. Toothpaste labeled as help stop cavities or cavity protection typically contains fluoride among its active ingredients. Fluoride works by remineralizing weakened areas of tooth enamel, making them more resistant to decay. Additionally, fluoride can inhibit the growth of bacteria that produce acid, further aiding in cavity prevention. However, it's essential to note that while fluoride toothpaste is effective in preventing cavities, excessive fluoride intake can lead to dental fluorosis or other adverse effects. Research shows that about 40% of people between the ages 6 to 49 have this condition. Dental fluorosis occurs due to excess fluoride intake during tooth development. It primarily affects children under 8 years old, so the likelihood of fluorosis occurring beyond this age is nearly zero. Therefore, it's strongly advised against swallowing fluoride toothpaste. To avoid these issues, I recommend using the correct amount of toothpaste. Simply apply a pea-sized amount under your toothbrush and opt for a toothpaste with the appropriate concentration of fluoride. Personally, I recommend Crest toothpaste, known for its effectiveness. With proper application in small amounts, a tube of Crest toothpaste can last approximately six months. After brushing your teeth with toothpaste, the next step is to rinse off any excess toothpaste. Simply spit out the foam and then rinse your mouth with Listerine mouthwash. To use Listerine, pour a small amount into your mouth and swish it around for a few seconds. Keep in mind that Listerine may cause a burning sensation, so adjust the duration of rinsing according to your comfort level. The final step is to rinse your mouth with a product called ACT. ACT is a non-alcohol mouth rinse containing a dilute 0.05% sodium fluoride solution. This rinse further aids in strengthening enamel and preventing cavities. With these simple steps, you've completed the mouth care system. While this step-by-step -step system provides the best solution for oral health issues, there are some low-cost protocols. You can use baking soda as a toothpaste alternative by mixing it with water. To use baking soda as a toothpaste alternative, start by wetting your toothbrush with water. Then, dip the wet toothbrush into baking soda powder or sprinkle a small amount of baking soda onto the bristles. Gently brush your teeth using the baking soda and water mixture, ensuring to cover all tooth surfaces. Brush for approximately 2 minutes. After brushing, rinse your mouth thoroughly with water to remove any remaining baking soda residue. Repeat this process daily or as needed to maintain clean teeth and fresh breath. We've covered a lot about what you should be doing for your oral health, but now let's discuss what you absolutely must avoid. First and foremost, avoid alcohol, 
whether we're talking about oral health or overall well-being. Alcohol consumption can lead to dehydration and decreased saliva production, resulting in a dry mouth. When saliva production is reduced, the mouth becomes more acidic, which can contribute to demineralization and tooth decay. Now, looking at the pH scale on your screen, you always want to avoid food with pH levels towards the left of the neutral points. You may not need to completely eliminate them from your diet, but reducing their intake and swiftly removing them from your oral cavity is what you should aim for. Foods and drinks falling under the red category include citrus fruits like lime and oranges, as well as certain alcoholic beverages. In addition to avoiding alcohol and acidic foods, it's important to watch out for any stimulants. This includes methamphetamine, Adderall, and caffeine. Stimulants can raise the acidity level of your mouth. You may also consider quitting smoking. When you smoke, the dryness in your mouth is often a sign of increased acidity, creating an unfavorable environment for your oral health. We've also discussed how sugars can significantly impact your oral health. While it's essential to limit sugar intake, completely eliminating sugars from your diet isn't necessary. However, moderation is key, and the only sugar you should actively seek is xylitol for all those benefits we discussed earlier. After eating, it's important to remove food particles from your mouth, especially if you haven't consumed xylitol. You can do this by rinsing your mouth with a salt water solution. Simply mix salt in water until it reaches the point where it doesn't dissolve completely. Use the solution as a dental rinse after meals, swishing it around your mouth thoroughly before spitting it out. Be sure not to swallow the rinse. Finally, avoid mouth breathing. Unless you're experiencing nasal congestion, breathing through your mouth can lead to dryness in the oral cavity and exacerbate teeth demineralization. Breathing through your nose helps maintain proper moisture levels in the mouth and supports overall oral health. I hope you enjoyed the video. You can find all the information and resources used in this video listed in the description below. Don't forget to check out the links to the products mentioned. If you found these tips helpful or have any additional suggestions, please share your thoughts, tips, and experiences in the comments section. Thanks for watching. Bye bye!